Hello and welcome to GE Training Today. In this video, we're going to take a look at GE's technical training options. So let's get to it. If you're new to GE's technical training, I can tell you it consists of two basic categories, unstructured and structured training. Unstructured training is very much like the pieces of a puzzle that hasn't been put together yet. You can look at the individual pieces and gain some understanding, but more often than not, it's more like a quick reference and not until the puzzle is fully assembled or structured that you achieve the greatest understanding. Let's get started by looking at how to access our unstructured training and then we can move forward from there. First, let's take a look at unstructured. This is self-paced, open 24-7, 365 days a year, with no deadlines. You learn through watching video-based content. There's no subscription needed and no exam. You simply decide what to learn, where to learn, and when to learn it. So how do you gain access? Simple, there's two options. First, you can go to the URL shown, scroll down until you reach our how-to and training video sections, then your options are to view all or use the filter drop-down to select the specific applications area. Then you simply browse, find what you're looking for, and view. It's that easy. Your second option is to go to the YouTube URL shown here. This is our landing page where you'll see some options to browse our categorized training videos. From here, go to our featured channels on the right, where you can select one of our learning and development channels. To demonstrate this, I'm going to select our protection and control channel. Here we have over 500 video-based e-learning modules available to you covering protection, substation automation, and distribution automation. You can browse by video or by playlist, which is broken down by product, application, and by training course or program. An example of a training course playlist being E960, which is a three-series classical course, or you can simply search using keywords. Before we look further at structured courses, let's take a small detour and get a better understanding of the types of video-based learning media we have available. Each video is considered to be a learning module, and they're grouped by using a naming convention that includes A, the product abbreviation, and B, a unique number to make it easier to group and control content. First, we have e-learning modules, which are designed for self-paced learning. These modules consist of three levels. These are essentials using 100 series numbering, intermediate level with 200 series numbering, and for more complex topics, we have 300 series. Second, we have workshop modules. These are used in hands-on classroom environments with corresponding equipment. Their numbering starts at 400. Please note, you will not be able to find these on our YouTube channel or GE resource page. For access to these, you need to register and attend one of our courses or programs. Third, we have how-to videos. These are a short, few minutes in duration, and are very useful if you're trying to complete a specific task. Their numbering starts at 1,000. Finally, we have technical webinars. These are recordings of live webinars, typically two hours in duration, that we've run and are a great source of knowledge to assist learning. Their numbering starts at 2,000. You'll notice that the splash or front pages of these modules look different. This is to make for easier identification. Now let's look at structured learning. I'll explain about the different types of offerings we have in a few moments, but first let me cover what structured training actually is. It comes in many forms, but they all have the same key attributes in that there's an assessment testing, they're instructor-led, and there are deadlines for completion of certain elements of the course or program. Also, other than for live webinars, there's a charge for attending. Let's look at the different elements of structured learning that we use to assist with knowledge transfer from us to you. The first one of these is e-learning. We touched on this earlier, but here in the structured learning courses and programs, we use it to prepare our students for the instructor-led sessions. The next element is assessment testing. We use this to determine if knowledge has been transferred. It occurs on almost all courses and takes place online using random multiple choice questions that are presented to the student covering the training modules they've completed. The third element is our virtual sessions. 
Virtual sessions are used to inform as well as engage our students in a brief question and answer session when we kick off any of our courses with the exception of classical training. We also use virtual sessions to introduce the instructor and course schedule and allow for Q&A. The fourth element is a virtual class. These take place with the instructor and the students located remotely from one another. Typically such courses are one or two days in length with the day broken into two three hour sessions. The fifth element is a workshop. A workshop allows students to physically work with the equipment following a set of tasks set out for them by the instructor. Students may work alone or in groups to meet the course objectives. It really depends on the course being taken. For workshops, the instructor is really just facilitating the workshop. The learning is driven by the students through task-based learning. Another very important part is our sixth element, which is our collaboration tool. Whenever we conduct a more complex training program, we always use a collaboration tool so our students can learn from our instructors as well as their peers. This collaboration piece sets GE apart from other trainings and has proven to be extremely effective not just at getting things done, but getting things done better. The seventh and final element is a classical class session. In these sessions, there are typically no e-learning or virtual sessions. You simply turn up and attend. The downside of this option is that we cannot go as deep into the details as we'd often like to. We'll talk more about this later. Virtual courses flow as follows. Registration closes approximately 30 days prior to the course start date. This is so we can set up registered students and send them the necessary course information pack. The course starts with a virtual session to introduce the instructor, go over the course schedule, introduce the testing and collaboration tools and critical dates, i.e. the course deadlines. Students then start the coursework with the aim being to prepare them for the actual virtual class. This is then assessed through online testing. You must successfully pass the testing to be able to attend the virtual class. The next session is the virtual class. This is the main session of learning, building on the content covered in the e-learning coursework. This is why we insist that students have completed this before attending the virtual class. The experience is pretty much the same as if you were in a physical class with the instructor. There's a whiteboard, content is presented, demonstration of techniques takes place, and Q&A dialogue occurs between the students and the instructor. Once the virtual class is completed, there's a final assessment test to ascertain if the student has met the learning objectives. Finally, we issue the course graduation certificate. This includes your name, course taken, course covered, and the learning hours expended. Programs are designed to build core competency so on completion you can apply the skills taught during the course in your workplace. These are what we call blended learning programs involving e-learning, virtual sessions, and a face-to-face -face classroom session or workshop. Like virtual courses, it's fully instructor-led. There's an additional virtual session prior to the workshop to go over the e-learning results and cover off areas identified in the testing where learning objectives were simply not met. Finally, it prepares the students for the workshop and allows for more Q&A. The workshops are typically five days in length and you can expect a very intense week of learning. Knowing and understanding the e-learning content is critical. Each student is given a learning plan for the week where through practical application, the student will set up products and then gradually integrate and build a system which they are expected to demonstrate to the class on the final day. There is a final assessment test and this is then followed approximately two weeks later with a final virtual session. The objective of this session is twofold. A, to allow students to ask any questions about the course and its content. Often we find there's questions that the student would like to ask but didn't think of during the workshop. So we allow for such dialogue as part of the program. And B, we issue the course graduation certificates and close out the course. Afterwards, any questions or issues you may find should be directed to our technical support teams. 
Classical classroom sessions are simple. You register, we send you a student info pack, and then you attend the Learning Center on the designated day. The instructor will work through the course content laid out in the objectives. They'll teach the basics if there's time, but usually they'll either demonstrate specific configuration parameters or allow students to work through the practical exercises. As there's no e-learning coursework element, what it really means is that depending on the course, student makeup and prior knowledge, you'll not get to cover all of the material as in-depth as in the programs. Classical is less intense, but you get less out of the learning experience than with blended programs. On completion of the course, you must complete the assessment test to pass the course and receive a certificate of completion. The final type of training you can sign up for is our technical webinars. These are two-hour, no-fee sessions offered twice on the same day for time zone purposes. Topics are selected at the beginning of the year and are published as part of the course schedule. You simply identify the topics you're interested in and sign up in the link provided in the course schedule. Two weeks prior to the webinar, you'll be sent an email providing connection information. The webinars are usually on a specific application or product feature or function, such as, say, load shedding or fault location or how to configure a DNP DCA on a D20MX and the like. They're not a replacement for other structured offerings, but rather complementary to them. So now I hope you understand the different types of structured course offerings we have and what each type involves. Now, my guess is that you'll want to look at specific courses, so here's where you can find them. This is the starting point. We'll start on the GE Grid Solutions Learning and Development webpage. From here, you can one, review the different course guides and course schedule, two, there's a link to our online store to book a seat or seats on a scheduled course or courses. Oh, and one last thing before we move on. Scheduled courses are those that are most often requested. Anything else we consider as on-demand training. Once you start looking at the course guide and schedules, usually a few other questions will arise. I'm hopefully going to answer them right here. The first of these will be, what I really want is a course for a group. I need something at my location for a group of my employees. That's perfectly fine. For such inquiries, you should contact our team at the following email address. From there, we'll start a dialogue to ascertain the specifics related to your request, and then we can provide you with a quotation. Another really common question we get asked is, why do I have to complete the pre-course work before coming to the in-class session? The reasoning behind this is simple. Just imagine being in an advanced UR class, for example, and from the back of the class you hear someone ask, what's a UR? I think you get the idea. If all students attending a particular course complete the same pre-course work, it ensures the class is now on a level playing field, which precludes our instructors from having to take additional time bringing one or two individuals up to speed apart from the rest of the class. The pre-course work therefore improves overall training effectiveness and efficiency and ensures our students receive the learning value they were hoping for. This next question is also quite common. Why e-learning as opposed to classical training? To preface this, I would offer that classical training is sometimes referred to as say and pray type training, meaning the instructor delivers the material and prays the students retain it. As such, classical is generally a less effective training method. E-learning, on the other hand, offers the immediate advantage of remote learning at your location and convenience 24-7, combined with having the material in front of the students for a longer period of time for more repetition, which is well proven to be a more effective delivery method. It's really that simple. Okay, we sure covered a lot of material for such a short video, but the idea was simply to make you aware of the different options available to you for technical training at GE. Now when someone asks you about what GE's technical training options are, you'll have a much better understanding, and if you forget, please feel free to refer back to this video as often as you like. Last but not least, I'd like to thank you for watching, and good luck with your studies.